We got battles on all fronts here. Yeah, the other thing is that this time around, CLG on the red side. Being red side does make it a lot more difficult to use target bans like the Nidalee for Karsa, uh, like the Varus for NL. Yeah, and we have to remember last game that these guys played, CLG had decently strong control of the laning phase, didn't snowball it, and then Flash was actually at a five or 6,000 gold lead, which they then made some mistakes and ended up losing, so I'm expecting it some pretty different pick and ban It was a here. very relaxed game, mostly focused on those objectives, which almost helped CLG. We heard Quick Shot earlier. CLG had that 100% first turret, get a small gold lead. They've been thwarted off that recently. See yeah. if they can try once more. Obviously, blue side has a lot more flexibility with their bands at yes. Worlds here, but you can see already with the Elise and the Lulu bands, that is two-fifths of the CLG composition from day one. Mord, Darius, Gangplank. Three, well, three-fifths well, yep. are now banned out. So the first pick now for Flash Wolves, their priority, what will it be? Yeah, a lot of the tier ones banned out here. And with Elise gone, pick up the Rek'Sai for Karsa very quickly. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Nidalee is still up, uh, and they could pick it later mm -hmm. on after seeing more of CLG's pick picks, but this is just an all-around great jungler. Don't give anything away. And I think being on red side against Flash Wolves is pretty disadvantageous, only because NL and Karsa put together a pretty mean poke composition if they just do Varus and Nidalee. It's part of how they were able yeah. to beat the Ku Tigers with those two champions. And because CLG opted to just take down the tier one champions on the ban side, Flash Wolves will be able to pick their comfort champions if they want them. Yeah, I mean, red side does get, you know, final counter pick there, but they only get one lane to counter pick. You can't counter pick, you know, both solo lanes um, or the solo lane and the support. Blue side will be able to see one of those early. Again, that echo picked in. A lot of Gragas played by Xmithy towards the end of the season, evenly sin, but now back to the echo for him. Two games in a row, Alistar picks up here for Aframu. A little bit engaged for them. Yeah, this is what we see when there's a lot of tier one champions banned by b both blue side and red side. Neither team trying to give away too much in the very early stages uh, of the draft. CLG though, they did lock in some good team fighting here. Echo yeah. still, even after the nerfs, uh, does bring a lot of AOE uh, CC to the team fights later. And of course, Aphromu classic Alistar here uh, brings a lot of late game zoning. That makes me think that CLG are gonna look for a carry champion for Zion in the top lane and look for another damage source there. Yeah, and even though Flash Wolves haven't gone with Varus, they still have the Morgana, which can hopefully block the CLG initiation. Going back to that game where Flash Wolves did beat the Ku Tigers, they had the support Morgana against an Alistair on the opponent's side, right. and Sword Art was very capable of stopping the engages there. Nidalee is almost expected as a near yeah. to last pick for Flash Wolves. It will depend, though, how hard CLG can pick their initiation champions in the next round of this draft. This also separates a little bit for me if if the Varus was necessary, you think teams would just ban that out, but will Sword Art still be able to hit those bindings, make that team work? Was it just the Varus? We'll find out. Looking on the other side, the victor for Pole Belter played all throughout the finals versus Team Solo mid. He will lock it in once more, and Doublelift gets his Tristana. Okay, so CLG, bread and butter here. They got the Wave Clear mid laner, as well as uh, the Demolitionist in Tristana. Mm -hmm. Knock down early turrets, uh, and they will be able to defend if they do get behind. One of the things, one of the reasons why CLG have been losing in such, such spectacular fashion against the Ku Tigers is because they've been taking <laughs> more risky plays after they've got oh. behind. If you Ooh. have something like uh, Victor to wave clear, you can be a bit more circumspect. Well, we were. I don't know why I was talking about Nidalee coming through <laughs> this whole time with the Rek'Sai Rek being first pick. So <laughs> I, I let you slide on I it. I tunneled a little bit. You should have. You should have stopped me, Kobe. You tunneled. What? Okay. You definitely should have stopped me. So my bad on that one. But that is the hard initiation right there from Flash. Was that is no longer a full poke composition. That is very mm -hmm. heavy on the initiation. Right. The instant that CLG locked in Victor. Also, this is something that CLG have feared from the first week. In the first week, they banned Mal uh, Malphite two of their first games uh, without ever even seeing anyone play Whoa. here. It's the Echo flex pick. They set it up in the game against Ku Tigers, and Echo's going top lane. There's their damage source that we are looking for. It. it is going to Zion Spartan, the AP Echo into Malphite. We wondered what would happen. The Echo with the changes recently, Xmithy still took it for that first game, but Zion Spartan now to try to go up against the Malphite in the top. Seeing that Karsa yeah. and Maple now, Rek'Sai LeBlanc, see if their synergy gets into this game as well. That's a wicked flex pick to pull it at this point. 
because they'd already waited for the Malphite. They were probably expecting a top lane Bruiser, maybe like an Olaf or a Nar for Zion, so mm -hmm. they thought the Malphite was safe. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, plus this way they get a lot of AP damage into the Malphite pick. So Malphite, at this point, you can build Abyssal Scepter, but you don't want to have to spend too much, you know, right. going through that build path. Uh, and he will be light on armor. So CLG very diversified in their damage sets. That being said, for Flash Wolves, though, they've got the Black Shield that you mentioned for Jinx. Uh, and they do have a bursty combo of their own. Malphite and LeBlanc, very, very big at picking champions off. If Flash Wolves can get the Fog of War advantage, then you can instantly blow someone up. We're almost about to head into the game. This matchup, if CLG are to win, berth themselves into the semifinals for a game. And they absolutely want that. Coming out very outspoken as being a team that can make finals. If you think, e or if, who you think has the edge in this match, tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag FWN or hashtag CLG win. We'll tally those up throughout the game. You always see it at the bottom. You can participate in the streams as well. It's kind of like being a pro player on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets through. One thing I do need to touch on, one more thing I need to touch on about these team compositions is the way Black Shield will be interacting with Maple's LeBlanc later on in the game. So often, LeBlanc is like a it's a poking assassin in a sense because she can distortion right on your face, get quickly out, and do that multiple times as yeah. cooldown permitting. And normally when a player tries to do that, you kind of predict and CC when they come in, so it would be really big on the Alistair to interrupt that. But if Flash Wolves just simply puts a black shield on Maple later in the game, he will be able to poke as much as he wants on the Blanc in general safety, which will enhance uh, CLG's mm -hmm. need to get flank initiations with Sion Spartan Echo. See if they can keep those wards up. X Smithy on Lee Sin can get that sight stone for himself early and start that vision. So it's definitely a possibility that the flanks will be able to work. Good damage, just getting vision here. CLG almost getting themselves behind in these little early travels they do. Seems like they're all right for now. Well, that is going to be one proc for Sword Art, so a little extra cash. Yeah. I guess technically, yes, they're, some pockets. they're a tiny bit behind. But uh, Mirrored Ward's coming out for the lane swap here to see. Plus, they've already seen Flash Wolves down in the bottom lane. Let's see where they go with this one. Watching CLG versus Ku, you can see Ku just had an idea what they wanted to do. If it didn't work, they had another one. It seems like CLG was always adapting. We'll see if they have something on their plate and put their foot down first here in this game. Usually Pole Belter, very quiet in the mid lane. He'll have to watch Karsa and Maple's synergy, especially with LeBlanc and Rek'Sai. Still roaming around. It does not look like they're going to get matched up in this one. Well, CLG waiting until the camp is just about to spot to show side. that they are starting on the green side too. here. Yeah, and there's also Harass going down bottom. Let's see if Alistair can actually push them off the yep. double. So mm -hmm. this is despite CLG getting spotted at the back end there because they had waited to be shown. Flash Wolves didn't really get any intel, and I think CLG gets what they want here in the mid lane as well. This matchup going to be important to see if Poe Belter can land uh, his lasers through the minion wave and tag Maple. If you can get that uh, extra control of the lane since uh, Maple did go with the ring and only has the three biscuits, uh, then he can keep her mm -hmm. bottled up. That's a big point for CLG because the early wards, early map control coming out from Flash Wolves would be devastating. There's Poe Belter already going aggressive. Keep an eye on that lane. Poe Belter at 10, up CS. Maple been down 11 on average for this event. So Pole Belts are already having a good run so far. They are even, but that damage is going to cause Maple to chug those consumables. Ooh, great Bravo. trade with the distortion back. Yeah. It's gonna be a volatile mid lane in this one until we get some jungle pressure. I don't I see these guys possibly killing each other, but Pole Belter is running the barrier. Yeah, well they've already burned through all of their health potions in the mid lane, and something that's really interesting in the top lane is Malphite actually got the blue buff when they did the early double jungle. They gave the blue and the blue buff experience to the Malphite. It's really beneficial, specifically when they have a wreck side jungle. He doesn't benefit that greatly from blue. And this kind of makes the early laning phase incredibly punishing from Malphite. And what you could do, though, as Zion, to answer this, is try and shove your wave very quickly. Then you get your recall off back to base to heal. And while Malphite is trying to clean up all those minions, uh, use that time to walk back without having to use your teleport because bottom lane is going to be, oh, never mind, he is using his teleport back to the turret. Flash oh, Wolves no. did not see this though, so they won't know the cooldown. Uh, they can uh, infer it if Stake says, hey, he got back yeah. here way too fast. They should be um, able to tell he picked up a second Doran's ring and four extra that biscuits. Quick, yeah, <laughs> yeah that it, as well. it wasn't a vision, but it may as well have been, as long as Stake is communicating. 
Maybe a little off on the call for when the engage comes in. We'll remember that timing for teleport. Hold still very close. Aphromoot looking to put some pressure on the bottom lane, but it's just for some safe farm and movement for Ixmith. Yeah, I think the reason Zion wanted to do that is because uh, even Malphite, you know, pre-6, even if he does teleport down bottom, it's not a huge impact. Uh, and it would only slightly turn the tides until he gets his ultimate. And not to mention the second Dorans at this point kind of times with Stake losing his blue buff, so Stake won't be able to harass nearly as hard as he was before. He'll oom himself pretty quickly, and then we'll have to go back on his own. It's a really big point to touch on, though, especially uh, as we get to the mid-stages of the game. We talk a lot about the objectives and, you know, taking turrets or dragon after team fights, but the smaller objectives of vision control, uh, something that Origin has done really well, in order to enable the first line of vision, shove up the minion wave very quickly because it will occupy your opponents for a good, you know, five to seven seconds, plus give you the vision from those minions moving up. Here comes Smithy, though. Pre-level six yeah. stake. Stake is up pretty far without ward, so he is technically vulnerable here. Arsa as well in the mid. There's that synergy trying to work for them, but they do not get it off. Pobelter had cleared the pink. Arsa still went for it, though. Trying to push himself through that wall of defense, but cannot get any kills. So a little bit of love for the mid lane so far. Yeah, plus Karsa already uh, is a camp up here on Smithy. So he's already ahead in experience, and he's already gotten a summoner spell out of the mid lane. Really takes a lot of the momentum out of Poe Belter's yeah. lane phase that he was trying to build up here. Maple already with a decent CS lead. And Maple has been a really prominent assassin player within the LMS. A lot of people were looking for him and Karsa because of their synergy to really have Maple take over multiple games here. And finally, he's unlocked here to play an assassin in the block and he's doing quite well early on in the lane. Really a star player for the LMS. Actually considered one of the best now, though, in the bottom lane. 4-4. Four, four. No level advantage here as they fight, just trading damage back and forth. Triumphant Roars will be able to heal double it back up slowly. It should be all right for this lane. Yeah, so pretty much Maple's uh, CS uh, double lift with the Great block. lead down bottom as well as Zion up top, kind of making up for it. But marginal lead there for Flash Wolves. Definitely not working as I said before. Pobalt are not getting the CS lead possibly within the next four minutes. Karsa on the wing. Teleport still off cooldown here for Zion and Stake is level six. So look for the level six Malphite teleport down bottom if CLG get too aggressive. Sword Art's aggression towards it kind of told Aphromoo there was a little bit more than he wanted to fight there. Speaking of communication, though, Stake is really low on mana and under his turret. So if he did teleport in, he would only have enough for Unstoppable Force and no other follow-up. Great point. Very dangerous move if they actually decide to go for it. Looks like he will back for the possibility of something happening, but yeah. Kars is already back as well. Once he backs, x Smithy can't gank safely. Even though Zion Spartan does have his teleport up to match, so it's interesting. I have to say, there has to be communication be between top and bottom lane when there are standard lanes. It's so important. You have to clear out those uh, wards that have gotten into the side brush behind CLG's bottom lane right. because the Zion should be telling them, yes, there's a Malphite level 6, he's going back to get his mana right now. CLG, though, they push up that minion wave and then they peel off to take the objective here in Dragon. Nicely done. Stay low on mana. He's not going to be able to come in too quick. Dragon burned down as fast as they can. So CLG again kind of slowing down the fact of kills in the game, but aiming for those objectives first. And as far as encouraging viewers to pay attention to the uh, times when teams quickly shove minion waves, also shoving a minion wave just to get a recall off to get a purchase uh, is also a sort of mini objective uh, as far as this really early stage of the game. That couldn't have gone much better for CLG in standard lanes. To be able to get an uncontested dragon without actually losing much tempo or pace is really strong. A lot of that, I think, had to do with Zion aggressing so much in the top lane when Stake was low, almost baiting Karsa to come up, and the fact that yeah. Karsa had, I think, been spotted a little while ago in bot lane, so CLG didn't expect him to camp down there for yeah. that long. Really nicely timed, as we mentioned earlier, the double Dorans allowing just Time Winder to keep clearing waves. Got the upper hand on stake for the dragon for the team. Not, yeah, and not only did COG take that dragon, but they got the all-important first line of wards down into the red Good side point. jungle. You can see here, they even 
popped a pink ward behind that red buff. So they've got a lot of vision on the bottom side of the map. A lot of that had to do with X-Smithy, who purchases far more wards before Sightstone than yeah. any other jungler. Specifically, the stat was for North America, but it's holding true again here. You can see he's going for a warrior enchantment, probably a later Sightstone. Aphimu gets a very early Sightstone to try and compensate after X-Smithy put some early gold into wards. And we're seeing that exactly here. Yeah. Plus, it is also, not only does it cost him gold to buy all these early wards, but Smithy is still behind on farming here compared to Karsa, uh, who is a couple of camps now up on him. And the farm game is going pretty well for Flash Wolves thus far. Being in the 2v2 against Doublelift and Aphromoo, in game one when they had Kramer down there, Doublelift and Aphromoo up 20 or 30 CS. This substitution has worked wonders for Flash Wolves. Yeah, it definitely has, as Kropo talked about. That one cocoon changed everything <laughs> for the team. And then it's second cocoon. <laughs> A lot of respect in that mid lane. You can see the CS in favor of Mabel. That ignite kill pressure keeping Pole Belter on his heels. Zion is playing so aggressively here because they have this division in the bottom red side jungle. They're like, you know what? Rek'Sai's down there. Until we hear her yeah. scream and we know that she's trying to use her ultimate to get up to my side, Zion is just pressing this so hard. He's even past the turret there, trying to keep Stake under wraps. It's very similar to what happened in the first game between these teams, where Stake actually got two or three kills on Ooh. Zion because Zion was playing so aggressive and got heavily ganked by Karsa. This time, Zion is displaying the same level of aggression, but Stake is needing to just deal with it. Yeah, and Karsa has not uh, tried to punish him for it. He's instead, you know, trying to farm up, get his lead on Smithy, which he has done. He's got his completed jungle item here, the Cinder Hulk done for Karsa. Looks like you might be able to find him here. Smithy sees the ward. I don't think they're going to want to fight this one, but now with the knowledge of Loic Smithy, Karsa may try to make a move. Yeah, that's the other thing. CLG have to now play around the knowledge that Karsa will win out in a skirmish. Yeah. Great wards, though, for CLG. There would be a potential for Malphite to teleport down, but there were enough people missing in the counter teleport. Flash will call it off. I like this, playing off Maple's aggression. They'll see if he wants to go distort in again for damage on Pole Belter. Flanked by each side, though. Karsa on the right, Zion on the left. Yep, Zion buying some wards himself. He goes down, uh, places some river vision. And it is going to talk to him. Looks like only one melee minion because he shoved so quickly. Yeah. So looking at how Connor Logic has always come out of scrims, saying that scrims are going well, this is going well, but they completely fall Ooh. apart within a game. Seems kind of mind-boggling each time. Well, that's like like we were talking about in the opening, because it's happened twice against Ku, where CLG played so aggressively and so risky even after they got behind. Uh oh, Maple. That barrier's still there for Poe Belter. He can stand toe to toe for a bit. If the trade goes his way, the chain did miss. Yeah. Maple is taking really good trades. That was one of the first ones where Poe Belter actually gave as good as he got. Well, because he was able to dodge initially. Yeah. But going back to the team as whole as a whole. I, I'm pretty sure that the management talked to them after those two sort of snowball games against Ku, told them to be a little bit more cautious. Yeah. We're seeing it play out here. Uh, double lift, just sort of waiting until he can build up to the infinity edge. Yeah. And if we think about COG of old, uh, losing a game like they did to Ku Tigers, that's like the tilt of nightmares. They lost so terribly. Absolutely. And then having to come back in the same day and play two more games uh, seems really scary. A lot of this will just have to do with how much mental strength COG has been able to build up during the regular season to match up against Flash Wolves, who are playing very methodically and slow as they usually do. Yeah, this, we have to be very careful. Uh, Smithy's got to be very careful here, picking a fight with Karsa. Still has the level advantage over him. So even though he's backed up with the invade here from Doublelift and Afro move, Flash Wolves, all they have to do is pull that trigger. The first blood should be uh, very explosive from Flash Wolves if Stake is able to pull the trigger on his teleport. Yeah, at this point, it might just be at second Dragon with the way CLG is going to hold off for most of the objectives in this game. Top lane back and forth once again. Zion Spartan doesn't have to worry too much. Really just taking a bunch of Cinder Hulk damage there. Or, I should say, Bobby Cinder. Bobby Cinder. Cinder, thank you. A little baby salt, baby Cinder Hulk. <laughs> yeah, Zion's got about two thirds of the turret dead in the top lane and COG is starting to work on the bottom turret as well. This will prompt aggression. 
from Flash Wolves as COG tries to get more and more bold in these side lanes. Ooh, well, Belter tries to sidestep, but he gets caught with the chain. Belter up, barrier is down. His Flash can be used right now. The Ignite should be saved with that safeguard. That's going to be the Mimic of Maple. No kill coming from that. And Xmithy perfectly on the wing. The rocket just oh. over the right shoulder of Poe Belter. Not even close. Don't worry about it. Poe Belter stopped to pray in the middle of the lane. <laughs> <laughs> saved him. Narrow miss. That very easily could have been first blood and could have swung that lane over for NL because that would have given him the jump to infinity edge over double if that he would so Ooh. heavily need. I want to point out a nice little mechanic that Zion just used to gain extra pressure in that top lane. Okay. Just use the Echo Ultimate to get back to lane even quicker. And the reason why I'm focusing so much on yeah. min the minion wave control of the top lane is because Zion Spartan, whoa, you can see right there he got the objective himself, but he's drawn a lot of attention. Yeah, now he's got no ultimate to try and save himself if he were to be dope, yep. but he has positioned himself to get out with that ward. This is the Zion that CLG uh, thought they were going to see from the very beginning yep. of group stages. He's been able to play aggressively, draw resources from the enemy team, and still come out with his advantage. Definitely with the Zion we started to see at the end of the season with the Fizz and Olaf picks. And it seems like CLG did their own kind of dip again to come back up a little bit, but they're having that trouble. We talked about it a little bit already, but even hearing CLG mention that we're not playing like we play, it's a little disheartening if you're, uh, if you're that team. See if they can right the ship here, and right those wrongs. Still no sight ward for Xmithy. He's been finished up on Karsa. Flash Wolves have not been able to push their wards too far forward. Going again to try and chunk yeah. out Poe Belter. Those summoners down, it's got to be a rebound. So, oh, Smithy was able to get with the combo there. So CLG, again, they want to utilize Zion's big lead in the top lane to gain an, a map advantage mm -hmm. here. Shove that lane out and put pressure on stake so that you make Flash Wolves have to choose between losing an extra minion wave up there on the top side or some damage on the secondary turret. Uh, or teleporting in. Right now, though, Flash Wolves, they have the minion wave advantage on top, and they're pressing in. That's why they're going to be able to steal this blue buff. Well, let's see if they get it. They know the smite is down. Yeah, they ended up stealing it. it for the jungler instead of being able to pass it off to someone more beneficial. This is really a huge moment in the game. Unless Flash Wolves rush the dragon right now, Zion Spartan's going to continue to push out that lane. I was expecting Flash Wolves to actually try for a dragon there. Yeah, I mean, they are able to deny it from Poe Belter, which is, you know, optimal, but uh, Poe Belter hasn't had too much of a concern with mana problems. You know, he's gone with the early Negatron, so the poke from Maple is not as threatening anymore. Bottom lane, though, Afro trying to save this turret, and he's one versus three. He's teleport in a in. tough spot right now. It's going to be another teleport coming in. That should be stopped on the Rek'Sai tunnel. Zion Spartan also joins the party. It looks like he actually wants a bit of a fight. Phase dive is used back to a minion after execution. CLG have to transfer over to Dragon now, or else yeah. they committed that teleport for nothing. Stake uh, canceled his, so they know this is four versus five, and CLG are going to lose a lot of damage on the top turret. See if uh, the Malphite slaps actually do <laughs> enough before time can get back up there. It depends. If one rock is denser than the other, it'll work well. Yeah, some of these teams so quick to match teleports because they don't want to be outnumbered, but Flash Wolves would have had an amazing power play there if Stake would have just fall, uh, held off since yeah. Afro had burned his ultimate and Zion would have been down a teleport. Either way, they might get two turrets out of this Dragon trade. Zion Spartan should be able to get top side. It looks like he may be able to make it in time. No, he will not. Totally worth for Flash Wolves. Yeah, it yep. was. Second Dragon, in my opinion, is mostly meaningless because you can still get the chance at the third, and they haven't gotten the move speed yet on the opponent's side. The Dragons giving the gold to put Flash Wolves in this position is much greater. Double lift jumps out. Binding used. No, Zap actually hits. There's the rocket oh! as well. Double lift. Oh! It was like 15 feet of wall there if you made that flash. Wow. That is a flash that will never get over that wall <laughs> from his current position. Very risky positioning there from Double Lift. Pushed up really far past the turret that was just taken. Mm -hmm. And they punished him heavily for it. Three members down bottom, though. CLG try and answer with the turret of their own. Will they be able to get enough damage on mid, though? Doesn't look like it. Barca continuing to engage with the Black Shield on him. And it just keeps working. Everybody has to back off from Chronologic Gaming in the mid lane. Double lift just coming back up now to get himself back in. Didn't lose too much CS in this situation. 
CLG trying to keep tabs on Flash Wolves right now. Zion Spartan giving them a little what for. It doesn't look like they're going to get much out of this. They're really just losing a bit of HP each time they try to engage. Going hard here on the mid turret. Respect given by Maple and the rest of Flash Wolves. And double double is it there? Maybe not. They go in after the turret goes down. Ooh. Fight with the damage, and they are going to get taken out. Karsha goes down immediately. Maple living with a sliver of health. That's an L going down now. After they lose one, they keep wanting to go in. Who needs, ill-advised. Who needs double lift here? <laughs> yeah. Four-man push without the Trist as a turret definitely takes Flash Wolf by surprise. Karsha goes in, gets completely burstered. Pobelter landed everything, and the double Abyssal Scepter power spike from those two mid laners just destroyed Flash Wolves right there. I'll never understand letting the turret go down and then engaging. But they try for it, they lose a few. Two to one now, coming up onto 20 minutes. Doublelift also going to pick one up, and with the mid turret down, it opens up the map nicely for more forward wards and a bit of CLG movement from Afro Moon. Yep, they're gonna litter this red side jungle and try and push the last wave to get that wave into the turret. I think that uh, NL should be able to clean up the rest of those minions though and draw even with double lift. Let's see if Poe Beltor can hold mid. Victor, the god of wave clear, should be able to hold his own. <laughs> Laser. Oh dear. Woo! This is good. Nice job for Double Lift, able to get himself out safely. We saw previously against Ku getting dragged over walls. They couldn't even get from lane to lane. They get a little bit of freedom here. We'll see this fight again. The Black Shield gone before Karsa even gets into this fight. And then Maple distorting into the Pulverize. One part Ooh. bad, other part really unlucky. <laughs> And then Zion Spartan gets both ticks of the Time Wander there as Pobelter comes in for the finish, and he just gets bursted for far more than he expected. Yeah, Zion doing a lot of work this game. His early lead on stake manifested in, as you said, not only the double Abyssal Scepter build, but more spell penetration on top of that. Whoa, stake deep in enemy territory. Does not look like it's going to end well for him. The whole team is coming up the river. He's got enough HP to last, but the team definitely wanna, does not want to continue that fight. CLG starting to gain a little bit back here and there, but they got to make sure they're not the ones chasing the fights that aren't going to happen in their favor. And there's that Fog of War control we talked about for yes. the Flash Wolf. They're able to find their first pick here. Maple finds Smithy, and that's going to put more pressure on Poe Belter here in the mid lane, trying to do wave clear. Yep. Zion actually gets called up. Really swingy game here. Stake does have his teleport and ultimate if they want to push this really hard. Probably a turret easily for Flash Wolves. Yep. Eyes on Zion. Where's the teleport? Here comes. still going to go in. They try to get Karsa immediately. Still pretty tanky. He's going to take a while to go down. And that's enough time for Flash Wolves to assess and set up a kill of their own. Two going down. Zion Spire next week. Smithy coming back up from previously. Sorry. That was a great stun lock like there. Zion did not have time to get his ultimate off. Still trying. Relentless Whoa, here from Flash Wolves. There's another one. Chain into binding. We're seeing the composition kind of come to fruition here as they get together in the mid lane. And it is seeing how Flash Wolves wants to poke back and forth, hmm? but they have to be very wary of Aphromoo's initiation. He's not directly going on to Maple, but when Maple goes into poke, Aphromoo's very willing to go in for the initiation, and COG as a team is very willing to follow. As slow as this game begun, there's a chance we get some very bloody team fights. I haven't seen too many LeBlancs lately, but Double is feeling that, oh, there's half my health. I might need a Vampire Acceptor sooner than later in this game if that's going to keep happening, because Maple is doing that willy-nilly on every target he can get. Pole Belter, Double Lift, and we see it on Aphromoo team. Yeah, and as expected as well with the four AP solo laners, we see a yeah. whole bunch of early Aegis of the Legion rushes here for both teams. Flash Wolves actually got double uh, so everybody will be in range for the extra magic resistance, and it does double stack on the two. Yeah, what's so interesting about the double Aegis is I feel like it used to be good in practice, but I still prefer the tankier guy getting the benefit of the Aegis as well as then is getting a Spirit Visage because he's getting the aura anyway. The only benefit the second Aegis does is it gives the extra aura to the support who already yeah. has the aura. Uh, if anything, though, if Sword Art's not going in, at least Karsa can benefit Stake with his aura because they're going to get spread out. Yeah. That's the higher benefit of the Double Ages. I do agree with you with uh, maybe Karsa this game going with a more greedy build and buying Magic Resist just for himself because he's been focused down he's two been blowing times up. in a row. Right. By AP damage. So he really would love a Spectre's Cow right now. Zion Spartan trying to get this himself. This is actually a really early Baron, but Stake's going to sniff it out. Crisis averted for yep. Flash Wolves. That would have been a nice sneak, but obviously that ward 
Yeah, actually, and Silji used a lot of resources gaining, gaining that vision control of Baron, which I feel like it's a real... Oh, it's a very low percentage chance what? to get that Baron. And that pink ward and that sweeper might have better been utilized around Dragon, which is about to go down. And now, CLG's best form of initiation has no ultimate and no health. This could very easily be a Dragon or a Dragon and a turret from Flash Wolves. And really, it seems like it's just folding over from last game. Many mistakes made by Double If and Afro in the bot lane, kind of walking into a situation that got them killed. And now they lose pressure on the mid lane because they did not respect the grabs, the pokes, and the bindings. Small chunk there. Uh, Zion Spiron does have home guard upgrade as well mm -hmm. on his boots, so he could try and teleport into this, but it's a blind dragon here for mm -hmm. CLG if they were to face check. I feel like he's waiting for the home guard teleport right from base. Afromu does not have his ultimate backup. This would be so risky. Zion has been waiting in base for an opportunity, but he, he, he entered again. Off. He's back and forth. Looks like he will hold off on this one. The team's still trying to flank on this. Smithy's gonna take a bit of damage. Zion very much holding. Maybe they can get. Oh my word. Nice. Double lift gets hit. Very nice channel on that. Getting out of the unstoppable no force. That's gonna be Aphromu down. Oh. Like he said, no ultimate here. Nick Smithy comes in in a bad spot. Zion Spartan, rather. But this could be Flash Wolf's loss. If they can get a few more hits in on the side of CLG, they're gonna start losing members. Stake back to the front line. Karsa gets there as well. Black Shield on him again, so he can't be stopped. Double lift in the eyes now of Flash Wolves. Zion Spartan doing what he can to deter and peel off his AD carry. Zion onto Sword Art. Sword Art could go down with one more hit, but he just can't swing the sword. Oh, double lift double to the other side. Double lift in. He gets the reset. He says king me, but can't get the next jump. Zion Spartan now in a battle. A 3v1 around him. A 2v1, I should say. And it does not look like it's going to end well. The parallel conversion stun is going to happen, but Karsa is free to roam and free to swipe. A delayed ace there for Flash Wolves. What a massive fight. We said this game was going to start exploding in the mid game with some bloody team fights, and that was about as bloody as it's going to get. No ultimate on Aphromoo, so he dies before the follow can happen from Zion Spartan, which makes the delay in that fight very pronounced. And then COG tries to reach around the back end to finish that off, and Flash Wolves is able to prevail. COG actually started this off pretty well with double F buffering his mm -hmm. rocket jump right there. But again, those as you said, Aphromoo getting chunked out earlier, he had no teleport. And those flame chompers on top of the ward, very quick thinking there by NL. Then we get the spread out fight inside the jungle here. And then the CLG, it looked like Pobutter got a little bit baited in by the LeBlanc clone. Nice finding there from Sword Art. Oh. And Double Lift actually got too close to Pobelter. So both CLG carries standing next to each other hurt them a lot. Yeah. Flash Wolves, I feel like, did a nice job of target prioritization at the very start of that fight, knowing that they were free to focus Aphromoo. Would have been better for COG if they could have had Lee Sin going in at the start of that fight. And again, Afro takes a lot of damage. He wants to hold on to his ult. Oh. Gonna have to burn it. One after the other. All for alt there, however. Double lift home was taking that one to the mouth as they make their way down to now repair mid lane. I think both teams taking a slight breather, maybe, as they keep getting hit. Flash Wolf is pushing the tempo here. Even though they're behind, they're forcing CLG into some high pressure decisions, and CLG are starting to crumble again. CLG have to calm down and watch their plays because that last uh, mid lane turret fresh push oh. definitely cost them. Let's see if the Baron bait pays off. Goes down Baron. Pretty Smithy is in base, so if CLG wants to fight this, not only do they have to blind face check against a Malphite, <laughs> they'd have to get the time for Smithy and fight a 4v5. It's at 4,000, and they're getting chunked out. This is going That's great be for Flash Wolves. Zion Spartan gets himself away with the phase dive. They're, they're zoned Should out. Should be safe, but yeah, they can't do anything. CLG watches the Baron go down, and now Flash Wolves have a nice way to get themselves to this next set of turrets. Quite a bit of AP on the side of CLG. It's going to be up to double lift to start clearing these, bin these minion waves. This is eerily similar to day one of group stage when Flash Wolves had a 5,000 gold lead in mid game against CLG. Yep. They started with CLG winning the lane slightly. Flash Wolves had better execution in the mid game due to CLG mistakes. But this time, CLG does not have the Lulu for a hyper carry, and they're going to have to find a new way to try to come back. After Mukha, once again, Maple's going to take him down, take him right down all the way. It's another sigil, and it looks like they go in. A kick to NL. He's to the back line. Great damage coming in from McSmithy, but he goes down for his attempt. And can CLG clean this one up? Double if jumps forward. The red buff is on, so they oh, could binding. What a binding coming in from Sword Out. They're able to finish off Double Lift. The double kill for Stake. 
Sword Art has been so on point with Morg this game, and Maple is showing people why he was such a hyped mid laner coming out of the LMS. The amount of poke they have been able to put down on Aphromu has completely crippled COG's ability to play this game. And the vision control that they're getting done. Him and Karsa to boot, they've been able to control so much of the fog of war with this pick comp, and then you uh, land the ensuing bindings there. Very good comeback so far from Flash Wolves. Giant gold swing after that push. The amount of bindings hitting right now, definitely too high for the side of Counter Logic Gaming. Not respecting the space that Flash Wolves can play with. We'll see it once again here. Yeah, let's take a look at... So Aphromoo gets picked again at first, and he gets 100% because he... Oh, actually. That was such a forethought. Used his ultimate at the very end. Very yeah, early man. black shield for him as well. Smithy did get a really good kick onto NL. Mm -hmm. But it was just a little bit too late here. Double up jumps forward to try and get a reset, but doesn't fully get mid, can't get the well, range. And then he's positioning himself in between the turrets, so there's no juking that dark binding once he jumps into that spot. Yeah. Really just poor positioning there from double lift. Flash walls finishing up quite a few items here. That Banshee's Veil on stake pretty much gives him a black shield he needs every so often. They can now use sword arts for somebody else if necessary. This is Zion Spartan. We'll see how fast he can zero out NL here. If he goes for the attack, nice dodge on the Time Winder to get the damage on the backside as well. But he's forced to get out with his ultimate. Poe Belter looking to get himself something fancy. But oh, goes down actually. NL off on the side. Him and Karsa already doing work in the top lane, participating in fights in the jungle with the ultimates. And they're going to keep pushing. They still have Baron, and the majority of COG's wave clear and team fighting potential is dead. This is huge power play here for Flash Wolves, pushing two lanes at once. Just instantly falling apart once one grab happens. CLG gets another grab, and Flash Wolves know they have CLG on the back foot here, and they continue to pound them into the ground. Ward's going down inside the base now for any other grabs that they can get. They know they are safe to be here. Such a massive game for Flash Wolves. Well, they need to win this game to keep their hopes at Worlds alive. Yeah. Another binding lands! CLG could have clinched a berth into the semifinals here if they're able to take down Flash Wolves, but they are having none of it right now. Stake winning the Afro War and winning the League War right now with the rest of his team across the board. Fantastic play so far from Flash Wolves this game. Yeah, such a ridiculously large Baron power play right there for the Flash yeah. Wolves. Plus, they've kept CLG occupied for so long inside their own base that a lot of CLG's ward coverage expired as well. Now they're trying to rush back out and get the consolation prize of Dragon, but it's only number three. And Maple is just so far ahead of the curve right now with no true tanks on CLG. The LeBlanc poke is just out of this world right now. Unless CLG gets an incredibly clean initiation, they're always starting a fight basically down a man. That's Grievous Wounds. Oh, night. Grievous Wounds. You need a second time that combo. <laughs> LeBlanc pick is just coming up huge right here, specifically the way wow. Maple is playing it with the team. 5,600 gold that as is, a result of the Baron. That is almost double what the average Baron power play yes. has been here so far at World. Did you see how much control Flash Wolves have? And it's different control than what other teams have shown. Ku's shown a bit of this as well. When they have the lead, they run with it. They aren't unsure if they have the lead. They keep pressuring. And now onto the inhibitor turrets of CLG's base. They look to take this win very soon. Maple's doing all this poke without even the Black Shield being on him yet. Yeah. Double if though with the Blood Surster did life steal that up, so. Yep. Maple has to poke someone else other than Double Lift if they want to get a real advantage for this siege. Or Stake has to combo his ultimate with it and just kill him. That too. There are going to have to be some very oh. heavy mechanics for the items down for Counter Logic Gaming in these fights. They're able to hold the inhibitor without a turret in front of it. Flash Walls just looking for it. Pole Belter gets himself in a great spot. Kick back. Stake is going to go down possibly. That's a lot of focus for the tank. And the rest of the team's taking the inhibitor. There's the Chaos Storm from Pole Belter. CLG's trying to chase here, but they're flash. taking damage as they chase. A great binding from Sword Art. That's the headbutt initiation for Pulverize that CLG needs to keep it going. So they have to stop. Yeah, another great binding there from Sword Art. Great Morgana performance from him so far today. Yeah, Flash Wolves didn't let Maple set anything up with Poke there. The ultimate was aptly flashed by Poe Belter. And it completely backfires there because of the kickback in the turret. Another thing about Stake's build is he's gone for that just one magic resist item, thinking that the double AP is not going to be wanting focus to tank, which is generally true. And it's really been shutting down double lift. So the fact that they could kick him into the 
Nexus turret <laughs> for an extra little bit of help, and then they still struck Very to kill true. him. Shows how unkillable he's actually become. Said the mechanics are going to have to be high with the items down here. Still just a needlessly large rod trying to be built up after an Abyssal Scepter coming in from Pobelter. He is all charged up on his item. See if they can get themselves a good fight. It seemed like in the jungle earlier is what they wanted. A Chaos Storm built up but Flash Wolves has been separating and dispersing very much. CLG's nicely. spending a lot of money on Vision here around Baron, and now they're sitting in the brush. So they get staked. Flame That's his Barely oh, touches him. Correct. Banshee's Veil into Black Shield. Why would you even try? Pobelt's just going to be the one hit. Stake has all day to play around here. He says, come on, guys. Let's go. Blindings from Sword Art go to the backside. They miss, but they still have Aphromu to kill. Taking him down, Pobelter's next. Double it's gonna get hit with some rockets. The binding for Smithy is forced to be flashed forward with the buster shot backwards. Double it lives for another second, but the distortion now to come in from Maple with a sigil will end him. There's the auto attack. That's four down. Nick Smithy runs for the homestead, and he's not going to be able to do much for the inhibitors. That's the thing. Full take. Malphite is happy to face check a brush, and Zion goes right under the flame choppers again. Smithy gets caught. Yeah, still 20 seconds plus on the death timer, so this should be flash rolls. Taking the game, I think. Maybe just Back two inhibitors. Looks like the inhibitor top open in their eyes. They're going to want that. I don't know if they want to chance this right now. Not very many minions coming in, but... And they have Baron in the bottom lane to work with now. So it's going to be nice for them. Going in, Ooh. he's going to try to go for Sword Art. Chrono Break, Brat back. The fights are not being won, and they keep using alts outside of a big fight. And even when there is a big fight, they're not able to use hey. their alts. <laughs> so true. Well, this should be a repeat Baron for Flash Wolves here. Yep. They, they left behind plenty of vision. They've got two inhibitors down. CLG still licking their wounds. Really well played by Flash Wolves so far. The teamwork across the map this game, on point for them. Dragon can even be theirs in another minute here if they can get it, win this resulting fight if CLG actually wants it. In true CLG fashion, they are testing the faith of their fans. <laughs> yeah, so if Flash Wolves is able to hold this out, it makes the next two games incredibly interesting because yeah. that would put... Well, we'll go over this fight one more time. There's the face check. I mean, they do stun him. But Zion steps straight onto a Flame Chomper, can't ultimate out, and the fight is based, the game might even be over at that point. Pobelto doesn't have Flash from the last time, so Stake can easily just click on him to get the ultimate. The rest of Flash Wolves can then arrive at the fight. Really, the initial pick onto Stake isn't the worst idea, as long yeah. as Zion doesn't step on the Flame Chopper, because then COG would have been able to disengage. They attempt it again. These guys are just too tanky. Arsa, pretty damn big right here, takes a full hit from three members of Counter Logic Gaming, and they're right back here. Whoa. Another unstoppable force. Four member pop up. Double lift on the outside. They're going to actually have to look away from him. Stake's going to take down a 1v1. Double kill coming in for NL. Looking for a triple kill. That's a triple. That's going to be the Quadra. He gets a Penta kill. NL Penta kill. Quadra kill earlier on, Jinx. He is having a great day. And remember, this guy was on the bench for game one here at Worlds. He is coming up huge. There's the teleport. That's going to be the push for the Nexus for Flash Wolves. This makes this group so interesting. Flash Wolves still have a chance for first place in the group. Absolutely crazy. Flash Wolves march down the mid lane. Karsa down in the victory fight, but it doesn't matter. 37 minutes in. Counter Logic Gaming will fall to the Flash Wolves. Wolves come back so strong after losing to Pain last week, having an incredibly close game against the Brazilians already today, and then carrying that through to beat a fledgling, I think that's the wrong word, a struggling CLG <laughs> is just massive for them. And now the question will be, can they carry on their performance against Koo? So much strength, that is true. They have to, they're now staying on stage. There'll be a break between games. But now they face off against Ku, who just watched them after Ku had two very strong games themselves. This and now no one flash will for table. that possible tiebreaker. Yep. If COG are able to win versus Pain and Flash Wolves uh, go down to Ku, then there would be an extra game here at the end of the groups.